15 minutes. It's some exercise for your arm. Oh. Um, I've received some questions, and uh, it is directed to all three of the speakers. Great speeches, by the way. I truly enjoyed it. Um, one of the questions is, how do I decide whether I need paid campaign manager and or consultant? Um, I would say that um, it really depends on your style and how much you know about campaigns uh, and how big your, uh, how big your uh, constituency is that you are going to, to run. If you're going to run in the district that has, let's say, well, well Lily, in her case, she's like a 200,000 uh, uh, population city. That's a very large district. For her to run without a professional like help, those are the anomaly. Those are anomaly. I mean, that means she worked really, really hard. She has a very strong grassroots that she's developed, not five years, ten years. We're talking about lifetime of, of work to develop. Otherwise, if you have a district that large, it probably makes sense to have some professional help uh, on, on, the, on the campaign side. Whether it's, and the, in most campaign, when you look at the key staff of any campaign, is there's the campaign manager, right? And then there's also the uh, field director, right? Campaign manager oversees everything, and the field director is the one who's doing the grassroots stuff. Uh, for even larger campaigns, there will be the finance director. That's the one who gives help fundraise and bring in the money to, to, to get the word out to pay other folks. Um, and so it it's really depends on the, the size. Number one, number two is how well do you uh, uh, know about the campaign process? Do you think you or somebody you know very well that could do it yourself? Some people have their uh, siblings uh, or, or the spouse to, to be uh, the campaign manager. And that's it, fine. Sometimes it works that way. Uh, I've learned that I have enough issues uh, myself with my family that I don't need to make my wife my campaign manager, uh, then that's, that's just way too hard. And I think it's, it's also, uh, one thing we didn't really talk that much about was, you know, when you decide to do this jump, the most important question you have besides yourself, right, that you want to do this, to run for office, is really your family, your immediate family, right? And, and ask your kids, ask your spouse, uh, <laughs> I'm going to go do this and ask for their opinion, what they think. Because if your spouse, especially your spouse, uh, is, is not supportive of this idea, is on the fence on it, uh, it's going to make this very tough. Because campaign is really not a you know, nine to five or eight hours or three hours a day. We're talking about potentially, and all your weekends are gone. Let's put it that way. Your weekends are gone. And your weekdays, if you want to even keep a day job, if you have a day job, that means your evenings is gone. And basically, you really don't have much of a life until the election day. So, um, uh, so some of these sacrifices that you need to, to be aware of. So that's also a decision I had to make. Do I want a campaign manager or do I want? Um, number one, it's very important that if you decide to run, make sure that you have a mentor. And a mentor will probably have a knowledge of the basic of running and you're looking at a budget. If you're gonna hire a campaign manager, it, it means cost and cost is, is time and money. I didn't uh, hire a campaign manager because it was too expensive. Number two, I had a really great uh, mentor. Number three, um, I ran other campaigns before or I was a volunteer for other campaigns. So I hope that when you're running for the first time, hopefully you would have the experience, it's kind of too late right now, that two years ago or four years ago, did you help a campaign out for another person running for a school board trustee or a city council? I think helping running those campaigns, going door to door, going helping fundraising, going running errands, um, that has been helpful. If you haven't done that, that's okay, it's not in the world, is number one, um, do a kitchen cabinet if you don't have the money to fundraise for a campaign manager. Um, really have a good campaign coordinator or campaign manager, meaning make sure you can delegate stuff, make sure that person can run errands going to the print shop or drop off lawn signs, because you as a candidate need to talk to people. You shouldn't be running those small little uh, errands. And then I kind of mimic what Otto was saying is that your spouse, maybe your husband or your uh, wife and your kids is very important because my father and my wife who are immigrants from Hong Kong didn't really see the importance of me running. You know, you should be a doctor, you should be a lawyer, you should be an attorney. 
<laughs> but to be a mayor or a school board trustee, you must be crazy. You know, go let those moms, you know, be on the PTA or, or something. You know, you should really focus on, on making a living. But I think it's my passion as an American-born Chinese to really give back to community. And I think that's why we're here today is to um, how to give back to the community. Great. Those are really big advices. Um, another question from the audience. What is your biggest challenge in your office and how do you balance your profession and your public office? Um, so, so uh, as Margaret mentioned, I did have a few different hats. I was in the reserves in the military for 28 years, uh, and uh, I have a day job as a patent attorney. Uh, and at the time, I was—I tell people that's my my weekend jobs in the military. My night job was on city council because the city council meets at night. Uh, but in all honesty, it's uh, at the end of the day, it's it's all a balance. You have your family, you have your jobs, and then you have your public service, and. I have been very, very fortunate to be able to find folks to surround me that is much, much more diligent, much smarter than me, that could help me do what I need to do by delegating a lot of the works for them to, to let people help you. Uh, we all have 24 hours a day, but when you have so many things going on, especially when you're the city mayor, for example, uh, city mayor itself is really a full-time job. There's no such thing as, as much as it's a part-time city council, part-time mayor, trust me, if there's a fire at 2 a.m. in the morning, the press does not want to talk to the public information officer. Not even the city manager. They want to talk to the mayor, right, to get out there. So it is something that it's, it is a, it's really is the best job on earth. I mean, everybody knows, everybody wants to shake the mayor's hand, everybody wants to meet the mayor, everybody wants to, to be with the mayor. Uh, and you get to meet a lot of really wonderful people, but again, you really be able to surround yourself with the good people and the smart people and let them help you to, to do your job and to make, it, to make that work. That's great. So for family, it just plainly, it really sucks. Really, really sucks. I think on the planning commission, I promised my wife that I will go uh, maybe two evening events a month, you know, or maybe one event uh, a week. Really, really challenging. Once I got onto the city council, um, there's a little bit more leeway. She saw how important that as a mayor, as a council member, and she let me go like two or three times a week. She, she, just, she just gave up. You know, one, maybe one week in a, event a month, and then on the council, I was like two or three uh, a month. I think the deal with my wife was that she knows I was going to run as eventual, and then she say, well, we have one kid at home, and she's so lonely. Why don't we have the second kid, and then we run. So here I am, second kid, she's one year old. <laughs> And then um, let's run. And then uh, I see a reporter back there, a road journal, um, and her boss happens to be in taking a sabbatical in Taipei. And then at the time we had Sing Dao Daily and Ming Bo. Um, and I took my I took my wife, one kid, left one at home with my in-laws. Secret in-laws are very good to live at home. Um, and then it's kind of like that was my time to wine and dine my mom, uh, my my wife at the swimming pool, and say, Hey, I'm going to run. And then she says, look, you know, Emily's one years old. Allison is uh, six years old. I know you really want to run. Why don't you just wait two more years, just two more years, you know, when Emily's three. So here we are, Emily's three, Allison is nine years old, and it's always about timing. The mayor, who's Chinese American, running for a re-election, uh, I was running, and I was like, okay, I'll, I'll just do it then. But then, you know, uh, Sing Dao Daily Ming Bo was calling me in Scotia, Arizona. It's like, we're going to go without or without you. If you're running, you got to tell us. And it's like, oh, I'll just go out with a boom. And I said, I'll give you an exclusive, but you don't want to do that to a world journal, especially to her boss back there. Um, <laughs> and I said that this is an exclusive that the reason why I'm not running, because I'm watching my two kids at the swimming pool, and um, for the best thing as a dad, I'm not going to run because I don't want to be with my family. It went... I didn't tell my wife. My in-laws read it the next day. Um, May Wei read it later. Um, but when I got home, my wife kind of like, I, I saw the newspaper, saw it. You know, I can't read Chinese, OK? I just grabbed it, uh, uh, took it with me, and then went to the Chinese bank. Chinese banks are great. They're really neutral. They always don't say good things, bad things. And they're like, mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. So I said, is it good, bad? I said, oh, it looks really good. I went home. My wife said, where's the Chinese newspaper? I said, right there, honey. Where's the local section? Oh, it's, it's right here, honey. And she took it all the way to the bathroom laughing. You know. So that was a good sign. It ran me brownie points that you can go for it. These are the stories that I've seen families been divorced, 
I've seen kids um, not focus because daddy or mommy's uh, at a meeting or something. You really give up a lot. Another thing is when I was negotiating with Apple Inc. and kids remember a lot. Kids are little parakeets, okay? And then she's taking an introduction to business class at the high school. And they said that, oh, Steve Jobs is blah, blah, blah. They're going to stay in Apple. Apple's going to do this. Right. And then my daughter said, oh, that teacher's full of crap. They said that, we're, that my father's going to approve it because they didn't know the father was the mayor of Cupertino. And I had negotiated a lot of stuff. I told a lot to my wife, which we consult to our, our spouses, right? But these kids, these kids remember everything. And said that, Daddy, you said blah, 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 blah. And it's like, oh. Did you tell that to your teacher or your class? Because, you know, it gives out to the news like that reporter back there. Um, but luckily, she didn't say anything. Another thing is that when you're in the public, be very careful what you share or be very careful what you put on your car because somebody will look in the car and, and they'll read those things. But remember, if anyone has kids, kids are like parakeets. So if a reporter is very smart, they'll go straight to the kid and say, what do you think about your dad? Because kids don't lie. Those are great stories. I'm sure a lot of you are taking notes. And the only thing that I want to add is about the time is uh, what I learned recently, uh, which my boss allowed me to involve my wife into my line of work. So when I do CLF in Chicago, in Boston, I will first ask, will you have time that weekend? Uh, come with me. And at first she was a little hesitant, but she came and I arranged some side tour for her to enjoy. But when she see the line of work that I did and the response from the audience and the candidate, now she is my, my uh, strong supporter, which it take uh, a big burden out of me because of my travel schedule and because I'm going everywhere to encourage people like you to run. <laughs> so That's really good involve advice. Involve the family, involve the spouse. Get their buy-in, just like what you do in corporate. Um, I have another question. Um, 2016, 2018 elections, you can see there were some splits within the Chinese American community. How, not sure about other Asian communities. Um, what in the future, how can you see to unite and to minimize those splits. Okay, let me take a first crack. Uh, as I always said, if you you are not on the table, you are not at the table, you will be on the menu. For now, some of us at the table, but it is not enough. Why? Because we are still ordering the menu that are written by somebody else until we also at the table be able to write our own manual, means the legislation. Then we will have a genuine way to say, yes, we are at the table and making the change. Why I, I want to say that is to echo on it. The reason why we do what we do for the last um, two and a half years, it is because too many things happening around the country. We are not at the table. So first, we need you to be in the room at the table. Second, write the menu ourselves. And we cannot do it alone. We have to do it together. That's, that's the reason why I also have an urgency, uh, why you will hear more and more that we need coalition. What Lidi said is so true. We always nonpartisan. Doesn't matter what party you support. It is not about a party or not about whatever you label. It is about are you good and true to your community that you willing to lead. And it is not a, a big fat title. Actually, it's a lot of sacrifice. I applaud all of you willing to step up and be that, what, what I always call um, to be the change for the change that you want to see in a society. It is important that you keep that going. The, the question is about the division of the Chinese communities that, that you've seen. And <clears throat> I mean, let, let's, let's get down to, to the basics, right? So uh, I was born in Hong Kong, 
right? So there's some of us who are, some they call us FOB. Uh, some are born here as ABC, American born Chinese. And then there's those, they say, well, they are from Taiwan, and Taiwan is also split. There are those who are from Taiwan, they say they are not Chinese or Taiwan. There are those who are from mainland China, and which province are from mainland China. Uh, you could divide this thing 50 times, okay? You can go through and say, I'm this and you're not that. And, and uh, the ultimate thing is we are absolutely way too small and too, too little in terms of even try to have those type of fight. If you look at a, a community, an ethnic community that is extremely united in political power, that is unparalleled to anybody, look at the APAC, the Jewish community. That's a community that has a unifying theme of being attacked by, by the, the, the country's been the survival of, of, of Israel. And they are so organized, they are so united, and when they donate, they don't write $20 checks, they write $2,000 checks because they understand the importance of this. And I think it is important for us to be educated and not be naive. And then when people who you know who are new and naive and wants to come on Hawaii's uh, opinion on WeChat and start, start uh, 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 hitting other Asian candidates or Chinese candidates, uh, I think it's important for us to take a stand and say, you know what, you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, not that you want to engage them, but I think it is important to le not let those voices to dominate the chat and then other people start going away. Uh, it is upon us as a community, as us who, as, as leader, and when we say leader, right, we are supposed to uh, uh, show an, uh, an example, to lead by example, and people are really not behaving properly with these half-truths or fake news or whatnot, I think it's important for us to speak up to, 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 to put those voices uh, to, to a different volume because uh, otherwise, what's really amazing and scary is that those voices become the one that matter and everybody else is just so scared of them to decide to draw back and say, you know what, politics is dirty, it's nasty, I, am, I don't want no part of it. And that apathy, when, you, when that apathy sets in, they win, right? They win. So it's, 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 it's this, and this is a great question to know how things have changed politically. I mean, we, I, I've never thought the, the, the world would come to where we are today in terms of the political discourse and the division of we are, because at the end of the day, I don't care which Chinese uh, ethnic background you are, we are United States of America, we are all Americans. Whether you're Asian Americans, you're Chinese Americans, you're South Asian, Indian, we are all Americans. And we all believe in making, not, not quoting making this country great as a slogan, but really giving our next generation, our kids, the best that they deserve, right? And this is why we're working so hard every day for doing what we do, because I hate to tell you this secret, there is really no money in politics. If you want to be rich and wealthy and be a billionaire, politics is not the place to be. Some countries, it actually, that's the way you make, make money. But in this country, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> Thank you. So kind of what, maybe what Otto is saying is that what makes the United States really good is our strong uh, diversity. But if you really look at the hard numbers of the dating money that uh, Anthony was talking about, is that a lot of our voters predominantly in our district or in a city is predominantly Caucasian. Let's not be um, forgetful about that. And it's really about developing coalition. Can a Caucasian or a Latina or a South Asian represent uh, the community better than another uh, community. I think that it's very important that when I was running Cupertino, which is over 60% Asian American, that we have a growing Indo-American community. And I saw that, and I, and I really addressed that as a second generation Chinese American, I was discriminated growing up in the East Side because nobody looks like me, you know? And I felt very at ease. Uh, talking with my Anglo friends, my uh, Mexican friends. I can speak Spanish, but I can speak uh, Chinese. And then growing up in Los Gatos, again, is a predominantly white community. Then you throw me in Cupertino, which is a predominantly Chinese Indian community, and it doesn't look like what I was growing up. And I have two daughters who grew up with an Asian American majority. You know, when they went to Stratford, it was totally 90% Indo-American. She can say all these Indian names a lot better than I can. Um, and, and she can name all this food and, and everything. Um, so it's really about developing coalition building. It's about understanding different cultures. And it even is about um, perceive going against your own culture, voting against something 
uh, maybe the Chinese community want this, that, and then uh, giving it to somebody else. You have to, at the end, do what's best for the community. For example, in the 1980s, we wanted to introduce badminton and table tennis to our sports center in Cupertino. A lot of folks said, you know, if you look at the numbers, we don't have that critical mass. We see a growing community growing there, but, you know, you just got to wait, you got to wait, you got to wait. You fast forward in, in um, late 2000, when I got elected in 2007, and I brought a coalition of South Asian communities, Indian, Pakistani, Fijians, um, people from Hong Kong, that we want to find a cricket field. We want to bring cricket into Cupertino. It's a growing sport, and it's not an Indian sport. It's, it's from England, you know, but the British Commonwealth spread that sport around. It was a good way to bring people together. But again, we would displace the soccer folks. We would displace the volleyball folks. And the council was two Taiwanese Americans, one American-born Chinese, and, uh, well, yeah, Amer I'm American-born Chinese, and two Caucasians. And we got the speaker spoke, did all that, but it was really a deciding vote that we're investing in the community. We're investing in using sports to bring people uh, together. And it was a very hard decision. Uh, I mean, not hard, but it was an easy decision for me. But it was, it was really sad to see two folks using uh, against another group and, and wanting them to suffer. But it's kind of like, come on, guys. Let's all get together and bring the community closer. I remember when Antti Nagranshu in Fremont, in Fremont was having campaigns is that we have a skate park, we have this, we have that, but we don't have a cricket field. And say, but in Cupertino, we have one. You know, so it's really about bringing people together. Um, yes, there's always divisions from maybe Indian or Pakistani or Taiwan against China. What I tell those immigrants, leave your baggage when you come to the United States. Don't bring it into local government. We, we, I already have enough time finding money for uh, our library services, police services, fixing our roads. Um, we want to get more people of color. We want to get more women. We want to get more people to be inclusive. Thank you. Thank you very much for your input. Really appreciate it. That is a tough question. I agree with you. Well, we are short on time. Um, we have some more questions, which I will uh, personally hand it to you and maybe um, pass your response to the person who asked the question. Um, but last but not least, I want to take this opportunity to introduce or to allow the candidates to, uh, uh, for a minute of um, speech to introduce themselves. Today we actually have two additional ones. Um, Mr. Andy Lee, who is, I, I, I have to apologize, I'm not used to this uh, role change yet. He is also running for the Contra Costa um, Community College Board. Um, as well as um, Mr. Stuart Chen. Um, he is run, running for re-election for the City Council of Alameda. Am I correct? Yes. And uh, I'm sorry. I'm Sridhar Viros. I'm Sridhar Viros. I'm running for San Ramon City Council. Great. Thank you. So I would like to, oh, and Xiao Yang. Um, he is the um, school board member currently serving as school board member in the city of uh, Fremont and doing a wonderful job. And um, he is uh, running for city council? Yes, I'm running for city council, city of Fremont, District 4. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to pass the microphone over here and they have some time to introduce themselves. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chandu. I born and raised and studied in India. Um, it's OK, right? Can I take more than a minute? OK, all right. <laughs> OK, so my background is I studied my, I did my master's in political science. And I did my um, bachelor of law as, as well. And then, um, you know, I, I had to do hunger strike also to come to this beautiful country. So it's been like I'm living in Fremont for the last 20 plus years. And um, so my husband, uh, I'm a uh, business person. I do real estate business. So I'm doing real estate business for the last 16 plus years. And before that, I was doing like uh, property management for two years. So uh, I have a beautiful family. My husband is a 
uh, so senior executive uh, working in software company and uh, I have two grown up children. Um, the older one is 23 plus and the youngest one is 18 plus. Both are going to college. And uh, my passion, you know, this is my passion because I am uh, already working with various uh, uh, non-profit organizations. So I am a chairperson for one cultural association for the last 14 years. Uh, and um, yeah, that's my, pa this is my passion. That's what, you know, I came in, I wanted to come into the politics because, um, you know, living in the same neighborhood for the last 18 years, I'm meeting the people and I know their problems and issues and what they are going through. So I totally understand their problems and you know the local issues right now. So that's what I decided to run for the city of Fremont for a council member from District 1, Ardenwood District from Fremont. And uh, thank you so much for giving thank me you. an opportunity for uh, a papa. Thank, Thank you, you very much. And thanks for the invitation also. I, I was here, I'm here just because of my friend Ravi Pongal. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next, we have uh, Ms. Lisa Yang, who is uh, at the eve of announcing her candidacy. Um, she is going to be running for the city council in Dublin. Hey, thank you. Um, my name is Lisa Yang. I live in the city of Dublin and I'm going to announce my candidacy to run for the uh, city council. I am, uh, I've lived here for three years and I've grown to really love the city. Um, I've been a community activist, um, I guess so to speak, for a little over a year and a half, uh, mainly surrounding school issues, uh, school overcrowding, and uh, the like, and then also um, the overbuilding in Dublin. And so um, you'll hear more about my candidacy uh, in the months to come, and I'm really excited. Um, my professional background, I'm an attorney. I practiced for a little over 10 years in Washington, DC. I'm here now as a stay-at-home mom, taking care of two beautiful children. I have a son who's five and a daughter who's seven. I'm very active in the local school community, um, and I just really love Dublin, and I'm ready, ready to take action and serve. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. She will be the blessing to our city as well. Next, we have Ms. Teresa Kane, and she is also running for city council in District 1. That's correct. Okay. So first of all, I'd uh, like to thank uh, CEO of USA and uh, Papa and all the speakers today for making today possible. And I, uh, so my name is Teresa Kang, and uh, I have been living in the Tri-City area for about almost uh, 27 years. I graduated from local high school, and I graduated from UCLA with a uh, economics major. And I own a restaurant in North Fremont, where I live. Uh, it's called Milk and Honey Cafe for three years. And I, before that, I was a realtor for 10 years. So I have come in touch with many, many uh, families uh, at my restaurant. And uh, all of them encouraged me to uh, serve the community in this capacity. And before that, I had been involved in community service in different capacities for the 20, last 20 years or so. So I, um, so I came here um, when I was a high school student without my family most, for the most part. So uh, pretty much Fremont had helped raise me and I, uh, this is the time that I want to give back to the community and uh, to serve um, the community and bring people together. All right, thank Great. you. Thank you very much, Teresa. And uh, Srida, Mr. Srida. Thank you. Hi, my name is Srida Veros. I'm running for San Ramon City Council. First and foremost, thanks. Thanks a lot, CLUSA and APAPA. And I've been to many APAPA events. They're always one of the great, greatest forums that you always get a chance to meet people and make them know that why you are running for the city council or any other office. So once again, thanks. So regarding me, like as I started to be part of San Ramon City 
community services for last 10 years. I started as a cricket community, which I started, San Ramon Cricket Association, in 2008. That's when I started. But then, in 2010, there were certain incidents that really made me came out of the bubble and realized that, hey, we need to assimilate better within the community. That's how I started involving into the community services. And at one point, our city leadership advised that, hey, Sridhar, as you are already working on many community cultural events and organizations, we would like you to step up and get into the city parks and community services commission. That's how I got into our commission. So for the past three years, I'm working as a parks and community services commissioner. And during this period, I've been continuously working with our community and providing them study leadership, as well as providing all our sports organizations, what, especially the underserved sports organizations, as well as the community cultural organizations, the facilities as well as resources they need to be successful within the city. And while I'm working on this, our city leadership, once again, they suggested that, hey, as current our leadership like within the city council is pretty much all white Caucasian, all of five of our council members. So then they uh, advised me that, hey, you need to step up and get into the city council. That's how I got into now running for the city council race. And I'm very fortunate to have a dream team with our mayor, vice mayor, and our city council members who are supporting me, who endorse me. And while they are helping me, there are a lot of community members who joined their hands and they're supporting me, and I'm very fortunate. So one thing I understood that you have a vision and you are genuine at your heart to do your community services, people will be there with you. So I really admire everyone stepping up to serve the, your community. This is a great thing to see, especially from Asian background. One thing we always tell our people that, hey, my kid should become engineer, doctor and everything, but believe me, one thing which attaches to everything in your life is politics. So that message, we need to make sure we pass that to our self as well as to our next generation. That's why it is very important to involve in politics. Once again, thank you very much for giving me this chance. Have a great weekend. Thank you very much, Rita. It is truly important that we ha always have the community's best interest in heart and have a vision in order to carry it out. And the next candidate, I think, is doing just that. Mr. Bobby Cooler, running for city council in Dublin. Thank you. Thank you, Papa, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, Margaret, for inviting me for this forum as well. Um, I've heard these acronyms ABC, uh, American Born Chinese. Uh, we have one as well, um, ABCD. Uh, it's called American Born Confused Desi. Uh, <laughs> but I was born in India, so I call myself an IBCD. So I'm still confused, but I'm, I'm, I'm making my way through. Um, my background is in project management. I've been doing project management for the last 20 years, and I take large complex projects, break them down into simple components so they're executable. And I want to bring those types of micro strategies to local government so we can, we can do something about it and in fact change. So I have what's known as a do-say ratio. If I find a problem, I need to fix it. I don't just wait around and wait for my turn or whatever it may be. I need to make that impact quick. Um, my best friend died in Iraq and I found a niche of what happened. Uh, education and military service was, was uh, the, that, that niche. And it was hard to get scholarships for uh, people that wanted to further their educations if they were impacted. So I created a foundation. It's a do-say ratio. And because of that, we were able to help um, impact um, the children or family members of fallen service members obtain a higher education. So it's that do-say ratio. I don't wait, I try to act to make an impact and change. So that's what I wanted to bring to Dublin. And that's what impacted me to, to run. We are in a unique situation because we're growing. And we're growing to a point where we're not considering our infrastructure. So I've been a pest at city council meetings, I've been a pest at school board meetings. So I just thought, pest, interesting. I think that's going to be my four pillars, pest public safety, economic viability, uh, sustained growth, and uh, transportation and congestion. 
So that's my little uh, four pillars that I have. So I was listening to the uh, mayor of Fremont talk about making sure you have a brand. And I have a clover, which stands for that four brand. So anyway, thank you for the opportunity. I'm looking forward to the November elections. And uh, congratulations to all of you that want to step up and make a difference. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. <laughs> Next, we have Ms. Um, Carrie Rosado. And uh, she is going to come up and have a few words. Hi everyone, my name is Carrie Rosado and I'm running for school board in Franklin McKinley. That's in San Jose, District 7, and it's my first time ever running a campaign, so I'm really glad to be here learning from all of you. Um, so I'm originally from Nicaragua, so that's in Central America, so I'm a native Spanish speaker. I'm bilingual. I have two sons with autism, a five-year-old and seven-year-old, that have inspired me to get more involved with the school, and that's one of the main reasons and one of the areas I would like to focus on is special ed, also targeting our budget and more parent engagement because I don't see a lot of that in our district, unfortunately. So I'm really glad to be here and learning from everyone. So thank you. Thank you very much, Ron. Um, next, we have um, Mr. Benny Lee, who I heard from many, many, many people that uh, he is a really nice guy and we should all vote for him. So anyway, uh, Mr. Benny Lee is running for the mayor of San Leandro. Well, currently I'm a city council member for the city of San Leandro, and you know I want to thank the CEO USA, right? I want to thank the uh, the panel as well as Lily May for all the uh, information that they shared. They're absolutely correct. Uh, when you're talking about data mining, actually that's what I do for a living, right? And in fact, uh, Stuart Chen, who's running for city council, he's uh, benefited from some of the information that I pr provided. Uh, I started in the community as an activist, uh, working against some projects. I ran for the HOA board and then got noticed by the uh, city council because of the fact that we brought a thousand people down to city hall. Uh, when I uh, got appointed to the uh, commissions, the, the Rex and Parks commissions, as well as the personal relations board, I thought it was time for me to run for city council. But also I noticed that there was a number of gaps. So the gaps were that uh, typically Asian Americans didn't vote. So I saw that in, within my HOA, we, um, we had 500 registered voters, but we had 600, uh, 630 houses, and we had 2,000 people living there. So the first thing I did was I identified every single house that was not registered, and I registered 1,000 voters. After that, right, we went throughout the community, identified additional houses, and registered another 1,000 voters. And uh, it was a four-way race. It was an empty seat. Uh, I was told that I was going to lose uh, because I had no name recognition, even though I had name recognition inside the Asian community. So what I did is I basically looked at every single house, houses that I needed to hit the doors. I recruited a number of folks for the campaign. We hit 11,000 doors. 6,000 doors were hit, was hit by myself. Uh, it's basically, if you really look at the math, it's about 30 households per hour, uh, per hour so you, that, that's about 200 hours of campaigning. So if you want to uh, win an election, you're going to have to hit those doors, but you also have to pay attention to the voters. You have to understand the message that you need to put out there. I'm running for mayor for a given reason. Uh, I'm tired of business as usual. Uh, that's, that was the reason why I ran for city council. And I found that um, it's not a criticism of the mayor. The mayor is very nice. But she's not doing anything. She's just listening to staff, and she's not really looking at the future of where we should be going. We have projects that are in the queue, right, that ha haven't broken ground for three years. So I'm looking to get those projects going because it's going to benefit the city. It's going to give us an economic base and also bring a lot of jobs. So I'm looking at the leadership of the city and leading the city in that direction. I want to thank you guys for coming today. I, this is a very educational experience, listening to the speakers, but also hearing from you. Thank you very much. That is valuable advice as well. Now, Mr. Xiao Yang from Fremont. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Yan Xiao, and I am right now the president of uh, uh, Fremont Unified School District Board. First of all, I apologize for showing up like that because I'm not prepared to speak. I came directly from the uh, Fremont Union City New Work Tri-City uh, uh, Relay for Life walk uh, to support the American Cancer Society this morning. Uh, after being on the board for four years, I realized that you know getting elected and serve is not something about the the time.
title, you know, the position, the power. More importantly, like you need to really get to build a relationship with people uh, and then to represent them well. So that means that you have to spend a lot of time uh, working with the community, going uh, to all kinds of events, and then just sit down and talk with all kinds of people. And uh, by sitting on the school board, we went through a lot of uh, different uh, difficult and uh, uh, even sometimes controversial issues, such as uh, the curriculum, the sex education, as well as uh, bargaining with uh, uh, the teachers union. And uh, I believe that uh, by working with uh, the, uh, the rest of the board, I gained enough uh, uh, experience to serve the community better. Um, you can imagine that uh, you know I can e I even got a death threat for you know from a teacher uh, during the process. So that means that you you really need to get prepared not only for thick skin but also to uh, be able to uh, sacrifice some family life in order to better serve the community. And uh, after all, it's a thankless job because uh, you make compromise and it ends up nobody would thank you. And this is uh, something we face uh, as a you know, public official. So if you ask me why do you want to continue to run for a city council, um, I just want to say it's my passion. Um, after I came to the United States, um, in 1990, I started to be a regular blood donor. So over the two de decades, I've already donated over 17,000 cc's of blood. Um, so I just want to give back to the country and serve the community uh, better. And I believe um, since uh, I have the heart and I have the experience, I can really go to this uh, Fremont City Council and represent uh, District 4 and try to uh, work with the rest of the city council on uh, issues like uh, uh, the uh, uh, short of affordable housing, uh, traffic jam, as well as uh, uh, overdevelopment. And I believe that uh, um, together, you know, uh, we can build a better uh, Fremont. And uh, as for representing the uh, uh, Asian community, I was honored to be the first uh, public official elected uh, in Northern California that has uh, mainland Chinese background. And I feel that it is also you know, my duty to uh, represent the Chinese in the whole political uh, process. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We also have uh, Mr. Stuart Chen running re-election for Alameda City Council. Hi, Stuart Chen. So I am running for Alameda City Council. I served there once, come back again to serve on the City Council. Uh, I don't really have to talk much about myself, but I do want to thank this panelist. I've, this is my fourth election, and I thought, you know, why come here? I know the routine. I've done this before many, many times. By golly, guys, you guys are amazing. I learned a lot from why we need to have a seat at the table, from giving up your private life. Your life is now an open book to there's no money in politics. And what Lily May said about compromise, it's all true. I came here, I sat there in, in the back row, and I said, well, in the beginning, really checking my iPhone, just just showing up, just for the sake of showing up. But Otto, you impressed me. You gave me some really quantifiable techniques that I can go back and run this election. I feel more confident coming here tonight, just hearing this panelist, and Gilbert, and my friend Tony. <sighs> you know, this is really an easy crowd. Uh, we're here in front of all Asian Americans. When you start going to the forum, when you start doing the debates in front of attorneys and lawyers and community leaders, that's when the hard part comes in. What do you have to help solve the city problem? What do you have that stands you out from the rest of the crowd? And I think for this group, it's easy to say, that's equity. We're all people of color. We're minorities. We want a seat at the table. We want diversity in leadership. Yeah, we can be lawyers and engineers and doctors, but it's time to break the glass ceiling or bamboo ceiling. We want diversity in education, in leadership, and we're here. We're here to stay. We are Americans of Asian descent. So, guys, 
These people are putting themselves out in the public, and it's not easy. There's time, there's money, and all you have to do is vote. Please come out and vote in November. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Last but not least, Mr. Andy Lee. He's running for Contra Costa Community College board member. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Margaret. And uh, first, uh, uh, I would like to thank the uh, Papa Travali team, Margaret, Marsha, Nolan, and uh, Hui Ling, and uh, Nancy here. And uh, thank you also the volunteers and the uh, TV staff and the uh, Sale USA and all the our speakers. So let's uh, give them a round of applause. <laughs> thank you. So I have two hats. Uh, I'm also the APAPA Bear Region President. APAPA is a nationwide organization. We have uh, 25 chapters nationwide. We may have 26, I think. They just have one opening in Ohio. So we are here more help uh, Asian Pacific Islanders to inspire them, encourage them, and empower them. We are a nonprofit organization. We cannot endorse anyone, but we can provide the education, the resource, the networking. This is why we are here, trying to provide the education. So for me, and my name is Andy Lee. I was uh, born raised in China. I came to the US uh, in 1996. I got my bachelor degree in China, got my master degree uh, in the US, and uh, I served the community in multiple dimension. And uh, I, along with uh, several other people here, I started a Papa Travel chapter back in 2014. Now I'm the Papa Bay region uh, president in charge of uh, five chapters in the whole Bay Area. I also served the uh, Salmon County as the Economic Development Advisor Committee. Uh, I used to be the Salmon Unified School District uh, Parcel Tax Oversight Committee member. I'm currently the Contra Costa County Match Care Commissioner. Uh, also, I'm a Rotarian, and uh, the Rotary Club I attend is uh, Doherty Valley Salmon Rotary Club. So, many of you here is back in New. Uh, Candidates, you run for school board and you run for city council. So why I'm running for community college board? You know, it's, uh, Gilbert's here and he's a community college board member. So why I'm running this? To be frank with you, I'm not interested in running initially. One of the main reasons for me to come out to run is I see the kids suffering a lot. I'm not sure you know in Ceremony Unified School District, we have 32,000 students. We have five st students or five kids died for all kinds of reasons. The kids are very stressful. I'm here, I want to let the community, community know there's another opportunity out in successful paths for the kids. I'm not sure all of you know community college is a great way for the success of the kids. You know, as an Asian, as a Chinese, most of Asian, we value education a lot, but some people may push to the extreme, make the kids kind of have to have many APs, have to have go straight A, go to the elite college. The kids are very stressful, but they don't know you can send the kids to a community college and save you a lot of money. Community college is uh, first year, now it's free. After that, it's $46 credit, it's much, much cheaper. After that, it's have much higher chance to go to whatever university. Even UC Berkeley, like last year, the admission rate for high school student is 18%. And the rate for community college student transferring to UC Berkeley is 28%. It's like 50% more. So you have much higher chance, you save a lot of money. This is a message I want to send to the community, let the community do, um, know, and uh, hopefully I can help the kids, help the family. This is why I'm here. I hope I mean, you can help me, support me, also support all the candidates. Thank you so much. Thank you, Andy. He is truly a selfless community leader um, through the years that I have worked with him. So thank you all for coming to today's um, events. Uh, I hope that the information that we shared um, will become uh, useful for your, during your campaign. And I really want to appreciate um, all of the speakers for spending the time and patiently answer all of the questions. Now before we adjourn, I would like to have a group picture for um, Andy and uh, the speakers. 
followed by a group picture of all of the candidates. Why we do this? I want to give you some statistic. Um, the American population. Do you know how how many of us? The percentage. We're talking about four percent. Uh, just Chinese American, maybe four million. Filipino, another four million. But if all Asian together, we have about twenty-two million now. And according to some statistics, by 2040, it will be over 40 million. By 2060, it will be over 60 million. And also, by that time, Asian American will be largest than Hispanic. The reason why I say that, because I'm saying to those younger folks that the world is them. And I want them to know and start preparing now. We can only look at the common ground and working together in order to get there together. Don't look at our difference. We have so much. If you look at just Asian American in US, the federal government definition, there are 45 countries under Asian Americans. So if we said we represent Asian American, Let's at least to know who they are before we said we represent them. And the second thing, really inclusive, include them in all of your campaign as your constituents or your team member. I stop here. Thank you. Thank you very much. I couldn't agree with more. I think this is.